What up? It's your boy Rob Ray. I'm back with four more tips on looping on the Roland SPD SX Pro. So I had a video before of four tips and tricks on how to maximize your loops and looping capability on the uh, SPSX Pro. So you can check that out in the uh, description below. So just before I get started, I just want to say all these loops that I'm using, I made on Logic Pro. So I'm actually thinking about maybe making a sampling pack of all my loops and synths and my chords that I use in all my videos. And if that's something you guys are interested in, uh, let me know. Comment below if uh, a sampling pack possibly for free is something you guys would like me to uh, work on. A lot of these uh, tips uh, can probably apply to other sampling pads. Um, I know some of these functions are only on the uh, the Pro here. I think in general, these uh, ideas I have will help you with any sampling pad you might have. So let's get started. All right, so my first tip is putting loops on top of each other. So basically I'm gonna play a loop and then I'm gonna play a second loop that's gonna add on to the previous one and then I'm gonna add a third loop. For example, I have this one. Then I'm gonna add this loop. Then this one. Now obviously I made these beforehand and made sure they were all at the same tempo in the same key. One important thing is I'm using trigger reserve. So what is trigger reserve? It is basically the loop is not gonna start until beat one. Here's my click. If I were to hit on beat three, it won't start till beat one. One, two, three, four. There you go. Same thing, one, two, right? One, two, three, four. Right, so that's important because you want your loops to be sequenced together. Uh, so the way you do that is you go to your menu and then you go, you'll hit your pad. So my pad seven here, and just make sure your trigger reserve is on up there at the top. So make sure that's on for all the pads and the loops that you want. So I want to talk about the click real quick. Where's the click? We can never find it, where is it? So let's go into uh, kit edit two. Now you notice you heard the click, right? That's because my output is master and phone. So that means it's coming out, it's going to my interface where I'm recording my mic and everything else. So if you were playing in a live setting and the pad was going through a PA or maybe an amp you had, um, and your output for the click was in the master and phones, well, you could hear the click through the PA or the amp. So if you had a phones only, that means you would only hear it through the headphone jack in the back of the pad. So if you're playing a live show and you want to just hear the click, in your headphones, make sure the output is in phones only. What if you want to play all loops at the same time? Very easily, we just go into our menu, go to pad link slash mute. And here I'm gonna use pad link. And basically what that means is I'm gonna have my pad seven is gonna tell pad eight and nine to start when I hit pad seven. So I go to my send and pad seven is telling pad eight and nine, when I hit, you hit. I have a whole video on pad link. It's a very nice function, uh, very useful. Let's move on to tip number three. Here I call this tease in the loop. This is more of a, you know, a musical idea, I guess. What I'm doing here is I'm just gonna tease this loop. So I'm just gonna, and then I'm gonna shut it off. So for example, these two loops are playing. And I'm gonna tease it. So I just want to mention here, you want to make sure that trigger type is alternate. If it was one shot, it would just go crazy. We don't want that. We just want the alternate so that it you hit it and then you hit it again and it turns off. All right, real quick, I just want to show a quick performance of me um, playing this loop with the drums. And after that, stick around for tip number four.
number four. I call this loop sequence. So basically, what am I doing here? So I'm using pad sequence. So basically, I'm going to hit one pad, and it's going to consecutively play a sequence. So I have four loops here, and I uh, each pad has a loop. So pad seven, eight, nine, and four all have a loop on them. I want them to play one after another, but I don't want to have to hit each pad. I want to hit one pad. So what I do is I go into my menu, and again, I have a whole video on pad sequence. If you want to check it out, it's in the description below. So I go into my menu, pad sequence. My step number is four, because I have four pads that I want to put in my sequence. And then my pad sequence pad is the pad that I'm hitting, which is going to be pad seven right here. And then uh, I just set, I just put pad seven, eight, nine, and then pad four in that order. So I'm going to hit just hit the pad, and it's going to play in that sequence. Now pad eight. Now pad nine. And then pad four. I also have a performance video of that. You can check that out in the description below. Okay, so those are my four tips and tricks for optimizing your looping on the Roland SPD SX Pro. So uh, hopefully that helped, gave you some ideas, made you want to be creative. I made all these loops on Logic Pro, and I am thinking about making a sampling pack to give to my loyal subscribers for free. Um, so if that's something you guys would be interested in, let me know, and I could get started working on that. And don't forget to like and subscribe. We're almost at a thousand. We're halfway there. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Uh -huh.